Welcome to the Prophecy Club. I've got Marcus Samuel on the phone with me today, and he's a prophet, and he's going to tell you some amazing things that God has shown him. Now, before we do, let me bring you up to date with what we're talking about. As you recall, we had Ephraim Rodriguez come in, a prophet from Puerto Rico, and he was shown that a large meteor will hit just west of Puerto Rico and send a tsunami a thousand foot high at Puerto Rico up the east coast of America, hitting the east coast with 200 to 400 foot high waves, going inland from 20 to 100 miles. It will devastate the east coast of the United States. But where the meteor hits is on an earthquake fault, and that earthquake fault goes right up the Mississippi River Valley, and it will split from the Great Lakes all the way down to the Gulf of Mexico. Then, large chunks of California, basically, according to Maurice Scalar, California, most of West Coast, from California, the southern part of California, all the way up into Alaska, will fall into the ocean. Now, brothers and sisters, if you take a map and you look at where people in America live, that just about got about two-thirds of them. In other words, we are talking about if this meteor hits, if we don't pray it away, then it could kill two-thirds of America. No kidding, no joke. We're not trying to scare you. We're trying to bring the very best of what God is saying to you. Then I turned around and made a second DVD called Meteor, The Destruction of America, where I put together what other people had said. Come find out when I did research. Well, Ephraim Rodriguez is not the only prophet that God has shown a vision that a large meteor is going to hit just west of Puerto Rico. Come find out. I found six people that say it, not just one. Why? Because in the mouth of two or three witnesses, let a thing be established. So if we only have Prophet Ephraim Rodriguez stand up and say, a meteor is coming, we can go back to sleep. <laughs> yeah. But when you got six people saying the same thing, bub, you got to stand up and say, okay, this is God, there's something to it. Furthermore, I have found five people that say a tsunami is going to hit the east coast of the United States. Seven people saw America split down the middle. Four people saw large chunks of California fall into the ocean or parts of whole cities fall into the ocean all up and down the west coast of the United States. And now here's the big thing we're going to talk about today. Nine people that saw the reason America is split is because she splits Israel and As we talked about before, Kerry is in Israel as we speak, twisting Netanyahu's arm, trying to make Israel give the Palestinians a state. We've got to pray against it. I'm asking all hands on deck. (laughs) I should say all faces on the floor. (laughs) I'm asking for you to join our Fast Track team. And this is what we're going to do. Every week, one day a week, we are all going to fast and pray that America will not force Israel to give the Palestinians a state. Now, if Israel gives the Palestinians a state and we have hands off, that's fine. That's not our problem. But it cannot be happening because America is forcing Israel to make it happen. If you want to join our fasting and prayer, then you go to prophecyclub.com and you sign up to become a Fast Track member each week. I will send you a notice saying, this is what we're going to be praying for. This is the prayer I ask everybody to fast and pray over this particular week. There is no cost, no obligation. I never ask for a donation. I never ask my Fast Track members to make any kind of purchase in any way. I'm asking them to pray. You can unsubscribe anytime you'd like. Prophecyclub.com, fast track. Sign up for it today. Now, let's get back to what we're talking about today. Okay, this split of America, (laughs) big deal, okay, big deal. Again, I've got seven people that have seen the split of America, literally America splitting in two pieces. My guest today has been in the ministry for 35 years, and for the last 33 of those years, he has been a confirmed, ordained prophet. He teaches, preaches, and prophesies at the South Dakota Pine Ridge Indian Reservation. He ministers to the Indians there, but he is not an Indian. 
He's given hundreds of prophecies to individuals and to churches and to regions, and he's ministered in four different nations. Now, in 2008, God showed him a vision of, guess what? That's right, an earthquake. Guess where? That's right, down the center of America. He saw America split in two. He's going to tell us about it. Marcus Samuel, welcome to the Prophecy Club. Bless you, Brother Stan, and I greet everyone today in Jesus' name, and I thank you for that apostolic charge that you gave concerning prayer and fasting, and it will be responded to. It's so necessary right now. Yes, Brother Stan, on 6-17-2008, I was just in the presence of the Lord, not specifically seeking anything or looking anything, and all of a sudden, there was a vision that began to open up before my eyes. I saw the United States But then the focus of the vision began to turn to the Midwest. At the first part of that vision, Brother Stan, I heard the Spirit of the Lord say, watch the animals. I thought that was kind of unique. But I have learned since that animals have a unique intuitive ability to perceive coming events, natural events, geological events. So the Lord spoke, and he said, begin to watch the animals. I saw the ground begin to actually roll like ocean waves, just rolling, rolling, and rolling. I want to jump forward here for just a moment, but after that vision in respect to the rolling ground, I had the opportunity to meet with a FEMA director who was actually in training at that time, was doing staging events for special preparations for large magnitude type events to hit that region. I thought that was very interesting that what I saw in the spirit was confirmed by a person in the natural that had that kind of expertise. I asked him about the earthquake and the possibilities of what would happen, and he confirmed what I saw. He said the land would literally begin to roll like an ocean wave coming in, rising, receding, rising, receding. So back to the vision, I saw the land roll, but then all of a sudden the land began to crack. And it seemed like the mass destruction and the major force of that earthquake began to reach into Illinois, to Missouri, and to Tennessee, the epicenter force of that devastating earthquake that took place. Now, before the earthquake had full force, there was also a light show, a spectrum of variation of light colors that began just to emanate throughout that entire region. You had green, purple, blue, degrees of red, all varying in intensity, but almost like as you was watching a, a Hollywood movie. These colors were actually moving throughout the atmosphere. They were forming, and it began before the earthquake. It magnified during the earthquake, and then it still lingered after the earthquake. So there were some type of sound and light frequencies that were causing these lights to be a part of that earthquake experience. It was very vivid, it was very real, and the colors were moving and almost like they were alive. It was something that was tied not only to the natural earthquake event, but also I believe that there was some type of technology that was behind that, pushing that forward, making it more forceful to a higher degree of magnitude. Now, that said, Brother Stan, in that vision, I saw three particular things. One was in Chicago, which was the Sears Tower. The other was in St. Louis, which was the St. Louis Arch. Then the pyramid that was built in Memphis, Tennessee. I believe there's something connected to all three of these particular places. I believe it's got to do with some type of technology that is working in commensurate with what's taking place with the earthquake. Now, as I began to watch the Sears Tower, I heard the word of the Lord come to me, and he said, marine spirits. And, of course, you've got the Great Lakes area up there, and I believe, Brother Stan, that there are certain marine-type spirits that are going to come into play during the time of this earthquake. So you've got spiritual forces working together with natural forces and also, I believe, man-made forces. Now, that was the Sears Tower. Now, in respect to the arch that I saw in St. Louis, when the earthquake began to come into full force, it was almost like you could see the arch vibrating like a tuning fork. 
And I began to ask what this meant. And I heard the Spirit of the Lord speak to me that in respect to the arch, this was a sound gate. So you had a marine gate in connection to the Sears Tower, and now you've got a sound gate in connection to the St. Louis Arch. And then I saw in the vision the pyramid that was built in Memphis, Tennessee. And when I began to look at the pyramid in the vision, I heard the word of the Lord come to me, and he said, Stargate. Now, Brother Stan, you yourself and others on your wonderful program, you've had them tell people what Stargates are, explain to them what Stargates are. So, Yeah, um, I made a whole have, DVD on Stargates. Yeah, go yeah, ahead. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get that, Brother, because you have some profound stuff. Everybody needs to get that material. So when I began to look at the Sears Tower and the Arch and the Pyramid, after the vision, I began to connect them. When I connected them, it turned into a, a pyramid facing towards the west, and I'll elaborate more on that in just a moment. So I'm sensing, perceiving, and understanding as the ground began to roll and the earthquake struck. There was indeed some type of spiritual, natural, and an aspect of technology involved in all this. I believe that we're going to begin to see this happen to the degree that people pray or don't pray. That's why I was so, amen, just thankful that you gave that apostolic charge to pray and fast in respect to this. Now, the major thrust, again, was Illinois and Missouri and Tennessee area were the higher degree of red, which was shown to me as the major part of the force of the earthquake. But it did not stop there because the lines went all the way up to the area where Illinois and Indiana, the state lines connect, all the way up to the waters between Michigan and Wisconsin, the Great Lakes area, which, again, I believe there's marine spirits there that are waiting for their assignments to play out in connection to this earthquake. Now, it also went down all the way down to the Gulf um, Coast. It went all the way up to between Michigan and Wisconsin, but then also all the way down to Louisiana. And so we have... Okay, let let me just clarify that. You're saying you saw the United States split in two from the Great Lakes all the way down to the Gulf of Mexico. I want to make that clear. You saw that. Yes. Okay, go ahead. I, I drew that out in my poor artistic ability. I drew that out after I had that vision. And so the line of separation, indeed, goes all the way up to the north, all the way down to the south. And it was very devastating. It was very difficult to listen to the cries and the pains of people uh, that were experiencing this. It was traumatic. It put me into a state of humility to where I began to, you know, just inquire of the Lord, Lord, why is this happening? The amount, the degree of devastation and cries and pain and disaster and chaos that ensued was very overwhelming, Brother Stan. I began to inquire of the Lord, and he spoke to my heart that as people are determined to scatter my people or to part or divide my land, I will do to the same degree. And Okay, hold hold on right there. Hold on. I I, I got a comment on that. Maurice Scalar has said the same thing. He said, as we do to Israel, God's going to do the same thing to us, except it's going to be on a greater scale. Now, John McTernan's written a whole book on as we do to Israel, so God does to us, or thereabouts. So you're not the only one. Okay, you're saying that as we treat Israel, God is going to treat us. We split Israel, God splits us. We kick uh, Israelis out of their home, then, or God sends Katrina and kicks us out of our homes, correct? Absolutely. In, in fact, uh, the communication with the board that I had after the vision, I mean, the heart of Jesus was literally broken because the people of Israel are the apple of his eye. God has a destiny for them. God has a purpose for them. God has a restoration plan for them. But men have devised to do evil. Politics has devised to do evil. The heart of Jesus was broken in his answer. And he he was broken because his people had been scattered, and they were coming into a time of a greater degree of being scattered, oppressed, and misaligned, and injustice is done to them. I understood that as we 
stretched our hand against his chosen people, against the apple of his eye, and where his heart was broken by it, then he would in turn have to let the consequences come. That what we sowed, we would also reap. And man of God, people of God today, I implore you, just like Brother Stan said, we need to pray and ask God to mitigate this in his mercy and in his grace. This should not be done. But if it is done, the Lord help our nation. The Lord have mercy upon the people. Because unfortunately, Brother Stan, there's going to be people that's not directly involved in, against attacking Israel or dividing Israel or scattering the people of Israel. But they'll be involved to some degree because as this thing plays out, it's going to be devastating. If it's allowed to go, it's full course and it's full force. Well, again, I'm sorry to interrupt. I try not to interrupt my speakers. I want to let them talk. But I'm really concerned that America, Yeah, I think we don't feel like we have control of our government. And I don't think the average American, typically, I don't even think they even care about Israel. Okay, so who's going on? What's going on in Israel? We don't care. But the average Christian thinks, yeah, we need to be supporting Israel. But I think even the average Christian doesn't understand, so what's a big deal? You know, if we split Israel, we force Israel to get the Palestinians a state, and it brings peace. So what's so bad about that? So what's so bad about that is that's what God is going to do to us. So what I'm asking people to do is to begin to pray and fast in unison, same prayer, same day, so it gets, because the Bible says in the mouth of two or three witnesses, let a thing be established. Uh, One can put a thousand in flight, two can put 10,000 in flight. So if we have six to 800 people fasting, praying, same day, same prayer, saying, Lord, do not let America split Israel, then we can turn this thing. And here's the good news part of it. Dimitri Dudeman, Henry Gruber, and Bree Keaton that all saw submarines launch nuclear weapons up and down the east-west coast of America did not see at the time that America had been split or anything about a tsunami or anything about west coast falling into the ocean. So that's good. That's saying that not every person that saw the Russians attack saw that we had been split yet. So I think it is safe to say it's up to us. Now, we do nothing, we get split. And let me tell you, that meteor hit, game over, okay? Our life yeah. as we have known it in America is gone. It's over. It's done. <laughs> I mean, two-thirds of America will probably die within two or three hours. It much more devastating than a Russian nuclear attack, in my opinion. Don't get me wrong. One nuke going off in America, our form of life is over. But a meteor hitting and then the Russians attacking, look, Here's the thing. I do not think we can pray away the meteor. That has been spoken. But I think we can delay it. I don't think we can pray away the Russians attacking America. And I pray that we can delay it. But if we do nothing, brothers and sisters, what's the old saying? It says, all it takes for evil to prosper is for good men to do nothing. So we got to pray. We got to pray. Back to you, Marcus. Absolutely. And, And Brother Stan, I have been praying the same prayer that the Apostle Paul prayed for the Ephesian believers, that the eyes of their understanding be opened. Now, in that scripture, he's speaking to the call of God, the grace of God, but I'm praying also that God expands the people's vision to see the implications of this. It's necessary that even believers begin to understand and perceive the magnitude and the consequences of a lot taking place or what can take place if these events are followed through with. I still think there's an apathetic, lukewarm spirit, even in modern Christian sometimes, concerning the purposes and plans of God. We need, Brother Stan, to have the same spirit that was upon the sons of Issachar, to know the times and seasons that we may know what we as his spiritual church may do. We cannot be ignorant. We must be alert, watchful, prayerful, standing in intercession, stand in the gap, pray and fast for that which is coming. Jesus said it's going to be things coming upon the earth that will cause men's hearts to fail, things that has never been seen before. And, brother, I'm talking about from above, on earth, and below. So you're right on target, Brother Stan. Okay, let me ask about the screams. You said you saw people just running and screaming. And and before you answer it, let me read two sentences there. This is from Dimitri Dudeman in 1994, a dream he had. And I'm not going through the whole thing. 
but just two sentences, the earth began to move and shake violently, and the earth moved as if it was on water. The people lived in complete terror, each one yelling louder than the other, not being able to understand anything. The earth shook so violently that I was unable to walk. Tell me what you saw in that same regard. Well, the people were in intense chaos and confusion it, to a degree that some were literally dropping before they were being affected by any natural thing. I mean, this is, this is the effect of it. What they were feeling, sensing, and seeing caused them to even some have the, just drop on the spot. I'm talking about heart attack, stroke, I'm an opposition, but that's the way I would perceive it and see it if I had to describe it. Okay, now I mean, did you this, see cracks and fissures come in the earth, or did you just see it, the earth simply shake? No, there, there were cracks and fissures that were coming up, and then the earth began to shake. And then out of that, again, and I don't think I mentioned this earlier, Brother Stan, but when the cracks and fissures began to first appear, this is where some of the, what I, again, I call a light show, begin to come from. And then it seems also at the same time some of those other light formations were coming forth in sequence based upon what was happening with those other three places I spoke of, Sears Tower, uh, the Memphis Pyramid, and the Arch uh, there in St. Louis. But uh, getting back to the people, some were dropping just almost like on the spot because of just overwhelming fear. Just It, it was devastating. Well, as the Bible now, says, men's hearts failing them for looking after those things that are coming upon the earth. Exactly. And then the screams and the cries for help was overwhelmed by the sounds of the earthquake itself. And then it, it got to a point where you couldn't even hear like emergency systems, police cars, ambulances, fire trucks. I mean, the noise was literally uh, overwhelming. Okay, so you're saying this earthquake didn't take place in 10 seconds. You're saying it was going for quite a while. How long? Well, in the vision, it seemed like, and of course, in spiritual things, it's sometimes too hard is to, you know, to speak about natural timings and stuff. But I would say probably it was going to last anywhere from like maybe five to eight minutes. And then there was the, the tremors, the follow-up that came was devastating in respect to the fear again that was bringing people. I, I've never seen such fear or such confusion as I saw on their faces in that vision. It, it was almost indescribable. But, yeah, it, it, it's, it's going to be something of great magnitude. Okay, is there anything else you want to say on the earthquake, or should we go to the next topic? Well, that was pretty well it. And let me say this, Brother Stan. I want to send you a copy of the original that I actually drew out and share that with you. And for anybody that wants to you know, get a free copy of this, they can write to me and, and get that as well. But I shared with you concerning something that I saw in respect to the West Coast. And I didn't tell you, I forgot to tell you this. I actually gave a prophetic word two years ago in the, the prophetic poem. There were actually two lengthy prophetic words released in poetry form that concerned things that were taking place on the West Coast and on the East Coast. And I just simply forgot to mention that to you. The Lord brought it back to my mind. I'm, I'm going to find those prophecies and send them to you as well. But on the East Coast, there, there were certain things that were outside the West Coast line that actually you alluded to earlier during this program. What have you seen concerning the West Coast? Well, again, it goes back to something that you alluded to, and I believe it's got to do with invasive forces that have been trained and prepared to invade our country. And in these particular things, there were boats and, and submarines that were actually out there. I, I'm, I've got to get that prophecy to you and let you see it for yourself. But this was around the same time that I saw they were like three major angels. Now, when I saw California, they were supporting the state of California in the spirit. They were, I called them undergirding angels. And because of prayer and repentance to a small degree, they were there maintaining the structure and safety of the state of California. But there come a time that these three angels were given a release from their undergirding ministry of the state of California. And it came like a sound of, of the voice of God from heaven to these angels. And basically, when they were told to release themselves from their assignment, that's when 
again, you begin to see a shaking and a shifting in the state of California. And when I saw this, it actually reached all the way up into Oregon. I didn't see Washington, but I did see California and, and, and the southern part of Oregon being affected drastically by this. And as soon as the angels were removed, this is when it happened. I mean, it's going to be a sudden thing. No matter how many warnings have been given before or will be given, I believe that this assignment of the angels that is undergirding the state of California, when they're told in actuality, in time, to be released from their assignment, Brother Stan, I pray for those that live in California. I just believe that it's going to be a time when people have made choices. People are going to have to drink uh, their consequences by making wrong choices, not repenting, not having the... Uh, morality to you know live the right lifestyles so there is coming a time of judgment and this nation brother stan is going to be affected by righteous judgments and it's going to affect at least two-thirds i believe of our country and that's just another thing that i was privy to see by the spirit of god was these angels that were upholding and undergirding the state of california when they were told to leave well that was it and that's when it began to hit and it was also very very powerful and very very devastating of course okay well brothers and sisters you've been listening to marcus samuel has had a vision about america splitting in two and we want to say thank you for listening thank you for your prayers and thank you for your gifts of support god bless Now from the Prophecy Club, some exciting opportunities for you. You must, I said you must get these two DVDs. Outside of the birth of Christ, I think this is the most important information since the flood. Prophet Ephraim Rodriguez was shown in a vision that a large meteor will hit near Puerto Rico and cause a thousand foot tsunami there, but it'll be 200 to 400 feet high and go a hundred miles inland on the east coast of America. It will also split America from the Great Lakes to the Gulf of Mexico and large chunks of California will fall into the ocean, killing millions of Americans. In a second DVD, I put the whole picture together, quoting six other people that also saw a large meteor hit Puerto Rico, four for the tsunami hitting the east coast of the United States, six the split of America in two pieces, three large chunks of California falling into the ocean, three also saw the reason for this is because America forces Israel to split her land. Get both DVDs valued at $60 for a gift of $30. It's good for the ministry, but you have to have this information. Call 785-266-1112 or go to prophecyclub.com. Get the Meteor offer today. Get it today. How can I possibly begin to tell you what you really need to know about the last days? We have so many DVDs at the Prophecy Club, but this particular DVD is a must-have. It's called Revelations for the Midnight Hour by Maurice Scalar, and he covers 10 visions. These aren't just dreams, brothers and sisters. These are visions, and the 10 visions are the Tree of Knowledge of Good and Evil, the Six Babylons, the Vision of the Mantle of Elijah, the Vision of the Ten Lamps, the Vision of the Victorian Mansion, the Vision of the Wedding Supper, the Closing of the Gates, Three Wars of Israel, Preparation of the Bride, and the Vision of Heaven. All 10 of them, one DVD, valued at $30. We're making it available today for a gift of just $15. Call 785-266-1112 or go to prophecyclub.com. 785-266-1112, Visions for the Midnight Hour by Maurice Scalar. There are 30 scriptures in the Bible which say in the last days, massive amounts of oil will be discovered in Israel, and we believe we've been given the directive to use this prophesied oil and gas to fund worldwide soul winning. If you have questions about our vision, call 877-OIL-ISRAEL or 877-645-4772.